And alrighty, we're back. Feedback. That was uh, in game. The mic. So, blame the damn creators. But that would be the noise that gets made by a rift. Hey. Oh wait, I already got that one. What the fuck? Anywho, that was unexpected. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna hit on that. Man. I'm gonna knock that out from me before. But this will be one of my little tricks that I'm gonna show you now. So you go to the campfire. You run this little bit, you run quickly to the box, and hey, look at that! In one second to spare, we opened up the timed cache. That's how you do that. So, uh, oh. Uh, but before I got sidetracked, let's do the old welcome in portion of the show. With a hearty little hey there, hi there, ho there, dooters and dudettes. Welcome back to you. Welcome to you if this is your first time through. Happy to have you either way. My name is Slam, and I will be your humble navigator through this stream. Really not going to play too, too much. Uh, this is just more of a recap, and me passing on some of the knowledge to help you all along the way. Make your travels a little bit easier. Help you find things that you may struggle with, so on and so forth. So first off, we are not going to go there exactly. We're going to go to our collection because here's a little something that I noticed that may be beneficial to y'all a heck of a lot earlier on than when I came across it. So we're going to go on down. Actually, an easier way to do this. Go back to the campfire. So, as you'll see, turn up the map. I'm in an area that you're not going to see until pretty much the end of your run. This is where the story actually ends. We're going to come back to that in a second. I'd be going off in 18 different fucking directions if I don't pay attention to what the heck I'm doing. And, uh, yeah. Beware, there's probably going to be some coarse language, because we do that here on this channel. So, that's kind of something that goes against your morals, or upset your pretty little ears. Do be warned, and be prepared. So, as I stated, we're going to go to the camp. You can unlock the ability to cook. This is what I am going to talk to you about here. So, the last recipe that I picked up, still got a couple more scattered about the lands, but this one will do you wonders the sooner you put it in. And here's a little uh, FYI for you. You don't need to have the recipes in order to put them in. As long as you have the ingredients, it'll work. I had that happen early on. Can't remember exactly which one it was. But uh, I think I call it the two ingredients, probably like carrots and tomatoes. But when I was going to put in the tomatoes, it called for like eight. But when I got to five, a recipe that I hadn't unlocked came up and I was able to cook it without finding it. Which brings me to my point here Grilled Xander. Once you get, actually, is that it? Yeah, I think this is the one. No, because it required, uh, what do you call it? Legendary fish. So let me see if I can find this for you. Because it's not telling me exactly what it makes. Oh, not the oven salmon. When I see it, probably. And this is the joy of being a not so professional YouTube stream. Uh, we just do shit in the moment. 
there it is, the catfish kabayaki. So, once you get these items, and this is the only uh, recipe that I came across that actually utilizes the legendary fish, of which if you get five, you get a trophy. But once you have three of those, six wheat, six onions, and four bowls of rice, cook this. Because what that's going to do is everything that you produce, whether it be knocking down a tree, killing an enemy, so on and so forth, you get double of what you normally would get. Normally we would have got two leaves off of that, we just got four. Let's switch to my little hat. of stuff when you kill zombies and you have the uh, deadly transmitter activated instead of getting one mana bead you're gonna get two now the reason that I point this out to you is oh. meh, whatever there's this thing called the arc and the arc is gonna require you to donate resources so the sooner that you unlock that recipe the easier it's going to be for you to fill up the arc. What is this arc that you speak of, Slam? Well, let's take a look on over here. And I'll find it in a second. There you go. There's the arc. Uh, we could actually transport over there. Kind of be redundant because I've already filled it. Uh, that's going to give you a, I believe, silver trophy. Possibly gold, I can't remember. Off the top of me old noggin. But once you fill all that, there's gonna be a second level that opens up. And that is where you're gonna find this doohickey. Now, the unfortunate problem with that is, that weapon's only gonna unlock once you get to this area. So, that's gonna require you to open up the launch pad which is one of the earlier on main missions. Get all the fuel cells, which is going to take up most of your map. Uh, activate the pod, which is going to open up so you can go into the crown, which, let's see where that actually is. Think, yep, that's one of the entryways there. That'll open up. But you can also open up this side. Once you go in there, it's going to be an under. It's not going to be this area. It's underground. You have to work your way through that. It, it's a long and lengthy process. But you'll find your launch pad here once you get to it. And when you do that, if you've already done this, I probably don't need to explain it to you. If you haven't, then probably will. But the underground shelters that you go around unlocking, which I actually have turned off on the legend. So give me a second to bring that up. Oh wait, no, everything's actually on. Okay. So where the heck is it? Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. Please bear with us while we deal with these technical difficulties. There you go, this is what I'm talking about. The underground shelters. And I lost my train of thought. Whoopie doo. What was I going on about? Oh yeah. So like when you go to do the underground shelters, you have to go through two waves of the like, big old zombies. I can bring them up and show you what I'm talking about if you haven't gotten there yet. These bad boys. The ex human dwellers. So that is neither here nor there back to this. They're going to come out of this little entryway here. Now, once you defeat them, you can hop on the rocket, send yourself out, complete the game, hey, hey, you win. But then you come back, this will be open. You can probably go in it before you get on the launch pad. It, it doesn't matter either way. But if you restart the game after you leave, it'll start you right here anyway. So you go inside here, and you're going to find an access key for the lab, which going back to what I was talking about, the Ark. 
on the second floor there is a locked area that you can't get into until you have that key. And once you get that, you go in here and you're going to get your little power fist. Doop doop. So that wraps that all up for you. Oh, you may have noticed I have another weapon that you probably haven't seen. Bad boy. How do you get that, you may ask. Okay. Well, there's tombs all throughout the land. You have to defeat all of them. Once you do that, you can head back to here with your gas mask equipped, go to the top of the tomb, and you enter in. You don't have to do any puzzles, so I'm just walking around, but and I don't have a map to show you the exact way about what I'm going to be talking about, but when you go in, basically, in here is the tomb. You'll go through all that, and then there'll be a door here, a door here, and a door here that'll unlock. Once you do all that, when you come back out, the weapon's going to be down here. Now, the problem with this weapon is in order to upgrade it, it's going to cost you mana chunks. And that is a pain in the tuchus. But here's a wonderful thing about being in this area that I'm in. Once you get to this location, once you go throughout it, you're going to come across a whole bunch of mana chunks, you're going to come across a whole bunch of mana shards, and you're going to find some blue orbs, much like the one we just got from that time chest. Now, in order to set off your launch pad, you're going to need all of those. I think it's five mana shards, five mana chunks, a bunch of mana beads, and I think one orb possibly three. So until you load those onto your little rocket doohickey, you don't get to leave. But you're going to get an abundance of them when you're going through this area anyway, so not to worry about. So that covers that. Uh, these are by far the two best weapons that you're going to have. But, going later on, I think I already explained in the previous installment that we did on this, your axe and the sledgehammer, they're going to be more than enough to get you through. These are just make things easier once you're completely done and you're going through just trying to complete all the incidental stuff. So now that'll bring me to the next focus point of this video. The access stuff. Finishing up, I'm going to do, I'm not going to go through every recipe, but I'll keep them up on the screen long enough that if you want to reference it, you'll be able to, instead of having to go around and look for everything, you can just make whatever your heart's content, as long as you have the items in your inventory, so on and so forth. But uh, we'll start with wishing wells. I still have one left to find, but I pretty much know exactly where it is. I had it highlighted, I just haven't gone there yet. It's grayed out area. Uh, if I could figure out where the hell that gray area were. But that'll be a trophy once you find all of the wishing wells. I'm gonna assume right there can't really see it, but that looks to be a well. Right where that cursor is right now, I'll move it away. So I'm going to assume that is the last well that I'm looking for. But if you're looking for the remaining ones, you got one down in the far corner there, and one over here, one right there, one right up here underneath the, uh, the crown area, Yep, there's one right up there in that corner. It seems like there's one in every region. Get the one right there. Uh, I don't 
believe there's one over here. This is a smaller area, and I'm going to explain how to get there in a second. Because a lot of people will probably struggle to figure that one out. You can't get to it by land. So of course that means there is a certain means to get there. But that's not what we're dealing with right now. Tisk tisk, I digress. I don't see a wishing well up in this area here. And if there was, it would be white, because I've opened up every region over here. Can't get to that area, so there isn't one over there. We got one right there. Got one in the top corner here. Another one right there. Oh, this one's got two in it. And one up here in this top corner. So I'll zoom out. That way you can get a full grasp of what I'm talking about here. There's all your wishing wells, except for the one that I pointed out at the beginning, which I do recall is right here. In order to get to that one, the area that you're going to be going through to get your gas mask would be right up here. That isn't a bridge that you have to build, so that should be accessible right off the rip. There we go, so that covers your wishing wells. I will do the tombs. Those we have all of. So now, in order to get to the last one, you're going to need to get to the ground. So that'll hold you up until the end game. But that one's right there. Uh, earlier on, this one's locked behind a gate, and you need to craft the beginner lockpick, or the novice lockpick, either or. Got another one right over here, that'll be the first one. That well, actually, you can't get to that, but you can get it located on your map. But you have to unlock what is the rope in order to climb into the tombs. Now, that won't be accessible until after you've unlocked this area and you've begun to go after the uh, fuel pods. So that's going to require me to bring out towers and like relay. So, as you can see this tomb right here, next to this little relay, once you get to that one, that's going to be the one that you unlock, because the Lee, the, yeah, Lee Ray, the relay is inside of this tomb. Hence why you'll have to, you'll get the ability to craft the rope and then go down to activate it. But only then will you be able to access the tombs. Get it? Get it? Cool. Okay, back to where the actual tombs are. So, got another one down here. Actually, let me get that off so we're not confusing you with other little icons. One down there in that corner. You're the one that's going to unlock your rope. This one that's on the island, you'll probably come across that in your travels to get the gas mask. Uh, we got one right up here in this corner. Okay, no matter that, that's the last one that you're going to be able to get into because you have to go through all the other ones first and then that'll unlock. I'm uh, pretty sure we should have another tomb. Yep, we got a tomb right down here in the bottom, right pretty much in the middle of that area. Far left on this island. And there's another one there. The one right here. We'll zoom in. Yep, that's right on the ground, I believe. Actually, nope. You're going to need to unlock the mana rift to get to that. Which I don't have up. But the mana rift should be right around this area. You unlock that ability to use that, and you'll be able to go up and get that tomb. And uh, there is 
the tomb in here. But you have to go to that once you unlock this little island here, which I'm going to get to once we go through where all the tomb locations are. Another tomb right there. Another one right up here in this corner. it from the hermit's cabin, you're going to have to go all the way around this way, work your way through this, and work your way down, because there is no way to access that from this little area, bear that in mind, another one right there, that's near Wayward, wall checkpoint, Kappa, corner. It's kind of tucked away. So once you're in the Power Junction housing project area, you're going to want to go down. You get this one up here by the Magna Magma Anomaly. A mm, couple different ways that you can get to that. You can either take the scenic route, get warmed up by the magma, hit it from there, or you may actually have to unlock this. It looks like a bridge that you would have to push down from this side, so I'm going to assume that you'll come from that direction. And yeah, so I think that's just about it. As far as those go, we'll back up and give you a chance to scope all that in. <coughs> now, next to locations, the mid tablets. So, here's the thing. If you want to get to this little island, you're going to have to find all the myth tablets. Which, as you can see again, there's one here in the ground area. So that's going to be later in the game. So, pay no attention to the island behind the curtain. You will not get to that for quite a while. But, once you do get all the myth tablets, I'm going to go back to this area, right by the pyramid. See all those little, you know, little uh, dissected circle type of thing, I guess we could call it? That's all the myth tablets. Each time you unlock one, they, well, they don't transport here, but the images light up on these. Once you get all of them lit up, there's going to be a portal right here in the middle. Go into that portal. Didn't mean to do that. My apologies. When you go into that portal, that's what's going to send you Doink! Right there. That's how you access that island. Which, believe me, unnerved the holy hell out of me when I didn't put two and two together. Now, when you do unlock the final Myth Tablet, which I'm going to assume will be this one here, it will do a little cutscene. It will focus over in this area. It will show the portal opening up. But if you're like me and you tend to forget things within five seconds of seeing them, yeah. So I kind of struggled to find my way to that, but upon returning to see how many more tombs I had left, I noticed a big blue ball of goo in the middle of the thing and said, hmm, wonder what this does. And that's when I found myself over here. Alright, so that covers locations that you might struggle to get to. show you where your obelisks are. And I believe there's only seven. I might be incorrect about that. Yep, no, there's seven. Alright, 
No, oh, the obelisks. Remember that blue thing that I grabbed from that time crate at the start of this episode? Well, you're gonna need those. Kinda like with the relay towers, how you can set it up for the deadly transmission. When you have one of those on your person, it can't be in your inventory, you have to, have to physically have it with you. Bring it to an obelisk. Once you've unlocked the ability to do so, you're going to feed one ball to the obelisk. And then you have to do five different waves of enemies. Upon completing the fifth wave, you will unlock an ability that you can activate or not. You can only have one obelisk active at one time, but they do have benefits. There's one up here in the northern area. This one, uh, this one, I th think, if I recall correctly, I'll know in a second, I see a fireplace with a bridge, yeah, alright, so, this is the toughest one out of all of them, I would save this one for last, and what it does, I believe, is give you like an extra boost, towards a uh, cold climate, but by this point you're probably going to have the fur hat, the uh, winter coat, and the uh, hot water bottle, so you're really not going to need that. I'd save it just for last if you're trying to get the trophy, because you're going to have to fight a wave, uh, actually a couple of waves of temple guards, and they beat the shit out of you. Just gonna be bashing your head off a brick wall for nothing, especially if you have all those items. You're really not gonna need the benefit of this. But again, if you're going for the trophy, you're gonna want to knock it out at one point or, or another. So I'd save it for late game. But there's another one down here that'll unlock the ability to um, fight off the hot temperatures. That one I kind of recommend because it'll open up a trinket spot. Instead of having to use like the block of ice, you can use something else to help you in another area, like the, the knee pads for dodge roll, or what have you. Again, we all play differently, so whatever is your preference, it's not for me to judge, it's whatever makes you more comfortable, but having that will definitely make your travels of these areas a heck of a lot easier. So, just go around the map and show you where the obelisks are. We've got one down here by Fort Darrow. Not seeing one over here. We got this one, which is pretty close to the beginning. Yep, there's the cage suburb, so it's pretty much directly north from where you start. north of the cage suburbs. There's another one over here near the excavation site, the evacuation site. Got this one, we already did the Fort Darrow one. This one right in the middle of the desert here. It's a dried out farm. Mandrake Diamond Mine, those are the EO landmarks. You'll probably come into this region from this bridge. So, I would plot your path this way. And you got this one up here, which, like I said, that is going to be the hardest one out of all of them. Save that for last. Especially if you don't have, like, high grade weapons. Or, like, f for my case, I got, like, nine landmines, nine grenades. Another little tip is if you're struggling, with any of the waves, it it's it saves the progress where you're at. So say you like get to wave three and you die, you don't have to start back at wave one. You're gonna start at wave three, so it's good in that regard. But if you can 
kind of memorize the locations of where the enemies are going to spawn, you can basically do a circle around you, just drop in the landmines, and as soon as you start the wave, you're pretty much going to knock everybody out. And if you want to backtrack to a campfire to replenish your stuff, it, by all means, again, whatever works for you. Uh, but, yeah, so there's that. That's more of, like, just a trophy base. These aren't required. Some of them do give you an extra benefit that might behoove you. Like I think one is um, run speed, one might be dodge roll, one might be um, damage block. I actually can't remember off the top of my head. I just knocked them out and didn't look back at it. So there's that. And your obelisks. Time grades we're still working on. I'll probably knock that out eventually. So I might just do another video focusing on that. Uh, so your shelters. Again, with each shelter, there's a tower. I don't know if it's going to show the tower. Okay, so here's the tower for this one. What you have to do is you have to hack it. And when you hack it, you're going to get a... Uh, Sensor, I believe. Let's see. Yeah. There we go. These things. Central processing unit. So, when you have two of those, you'll be able to make a machine gun turret. Or is it one? I think it might be one for the machine gun turret, two for a rocket launcher. No. You don't have to actually complete. What are you doing? You don't ac actually have to complete the bunker. So what you could do, and what I would actually recommend to make it a lot easier for you, is just go to these towers, hack them, and get the blue sensor unit things. Get a couple of those, probably like four or five, and then go back. Because the easiest way that you can do these they're going to spawn, each of them spawns two waves of those big guys that I pointed out earlier on. So you could set up a rocket launcher here, and a rocket launcher here, because the waves are going to go, they're going to split up. But if you have two rocket launchers on them, you're just going to keep blasting them. You have to reload them, which basically you just walk up to it, hold down X, go one for one. Like, you reload this one, immediately run down to this one, because it's probably going to run out in a shot or two later. Reload, back and forth. Easy as pie. But once you get inside the shelters, there are going to be zombies. Uh, one of them has, it's basically just gas clouds, you have to wear the gas mask through. But you'll also come across recipes, items, and again, they vary depending on the shelter. You can get, um, uh, I think I got two recipes for plus five health, and then it was a bunch of different ones, like dodge, evade, run speed, so on and so forth. But you also get more of those sensory modules. Usually you'll find another, like, so you'll get like two once you complete it. One from this, one from inside the shelter. Uh, you can also get mana shards from it. I may have gotten a mana chunk, I can't recall, uh, blue orbs definitely, so they're worth doing here and there, but again, like I said, get your sensory, sensory modules padded up first, that way you can just make an easier go of it, you won't even have to attack anything, you can just set up two rocket launchers and just let them do all the work, all you gotta do is just run back and forth and reload them. That covers the shelters. Uh, buried treasures. I'm not touching that one. As you can see, I only have 42 out of 94. And unbeknownst to me, I don't think there's a map that you can get. It's going to put the icons on your map. And I'm not going to wander around aimlessly trying to find those fucking things. So, you're on your own there. Um, now, as far as the legendary fish go... I can't say for a certainty, but I will bring up the fishing spots, and I'll tell you areas where you may very well likely 
find legendary fish. Either this one or this one I know I got one from. say one of these ones down here gave it to me, if not this one. Uh, I think I got eight total. Maybe nine. This might have been one, because I think I had to unlock. Yeah, you had to rebuild this bridge, so this was definitely one over here. If you're still struggling and you haven't come across them, I got one over here and I got another one over here. So there was this island was good for two of them, but again, you're not gonna be able to get there until later on in the game, so that's not gonna help you out. But my suggestion is, if it seems more secluded, or you have to build like a use uh, wooden planks to build a bridge to get to it, it's probably gonna have something good for you. But again, like I said at the start of the video, go back to those recipes. We need to go to the campfire to do this. Oh, that's your sad. Okay, so this will tell you. But it doesn't tell you what their actual recipe is. Cheeky bastards. Alright, so maybe we'll go back to the campfire. Oh, take care of yourself. Ah. See, why is it going to be one or the other? Why can't it have both so I can just make this easier for you? But, anyhow, let's see if we can find a couple. Stab. If you can get three of those on top of any other benefits, you're pretty much going to one-shot anything from behind. So those big fat bastards that throw the uh, corrosive boogers at you, sneak up behind them, give them a nice power shot, they're pretty much down for the count. Uh, so I'm trying to go through this so you can see like which ones are like the max hit points. You can spam all those, and your health bar will be ever so thankful to you. skill, that'll increase it as well as increase your XP. So uh, 
running speed, 2.5%. Kalakuko. Keep that one in mind. So that'll help you with your attack crates. Got another max hit points there. That's green salad. Fish salad, power attack damage, plus 50%. That might be uh, beneficial for you to snag once we get back to the campfire. Steakhouse salad, heat protection, plus 9%. So there are food items that'll help you with like the heat and the cold. So hopefully we can come across the cold one that I have. So the backstab. Hamburger. Max five points. Oh, tenderloin. Another melee damage versus monsters, plus two point five percent, so that would give you five percent total if you get that one and the other one. Mushroom is skewered for another maximum hit points, plus 5. Mushroom pie, 12.5% critical hit damage. There you go. Mushroom skillet, another 5 points, maximum hit points. Garlic mushroom, another max hit points for five. Megan mushrooms, another 50% fishing speed, so that's three of them, that'll give you an extra 150%. Got the mushroom risotto for another 2.5% running speed, so that's 5% you can possibly snag. Onion rings are good for more hit points. In broth, search efficiency plus 11. So if you have that and you mixed in your little magnifying glass trinket, that'll make finding items a little bit easier. French fries, 5% dodge roll speed. And baked potatoes, another max 5 for your hit points. Potato salad, show me potato salad. We've got damage block 5%. That might be beneficial though. It means that whatever they hit you for will be 5% less. Uh, sushi. Enemy of your range shrunk 4%. That seems kind of useless, but if you want it, go for it. Kimchi. Build limit plus 15. Uh, go for it if you feel like you're going to be able to need it. But uh, between leveling up later on, you'll be able to kick up your build limit by an extra 50 points. And there's other ways to do that. It all depends. I mean, I have one location just for farming. I haven't really built upon it. So, I mean, to me, the building, aside from, like, the metal fabricator and the lumber fabricator, you don't really need Pasta bolognese, another 5%, uh, 5 points on your hit points. Bread, lovely, lovely bread, 5 more hit points. Curry, cold protection, plus 9%, so there you go, there, there's your cold protection. Chili dogs, 5 more hit points. Chili soup, another 25% to your backstabbing damage. Beef rice bowl, 2.5 more percent melee damage. So I think that brings us to 7.5%. Uh, I don't know the ones I got for you. And of course the catfish kabayaki, which was the one that I made damn sure to point out to you. That is going to give you 100% material drops. I'm going to go back to the campfire, and I'll bring up all the recipes with the ingredients. So if there's anything you saw and that you liked, I'll put them up on here for you. Now I'm going to go through the whole list one more time. Just want to get to the top. So, Grilled Zandy, you're going to need... 
four green fish, six onions, five spices. Zander Risotto. Seven green fishes, six red mushrooms, three onions, and eight bowls of rice. Uh, the rice is hard to come by, so I think the uh, material drops recipe is going to call for it. I would save your rice, because you're not going to really find that until you get to the like, northeastern or northwestern side of the map. Very tart. That's going to require 10 cherries, 5 purple eggs, and 5 wheat. Strawberry sponge cake. That is going to require 10 berries, 4 purple eggs, and 6 wheat. Tomato soup. I'm not going to bring that one up. That's just 3 tomatoes. Tomato bruschetta. Three onions, four tomatoes, and five wheat. Tomato gratin, three carrots, four onions, six tomatoes, and three wheat. Bone marrow, five cherries, six bones. Bone gulai, twelve bones, seven berries, and four spices. Bone broth, you get six potatoes. 12 bones, 8 carrots, 4 brown mushrooms, cactus juice, 12 cactus, 5 tomatoes, fried cactus, it's going to be 8 cactus, 5 onions, 5 spices, and 4 tomatoes, carrot juice, pretty simplistic, it's going to be 12 carrots and 6 tomatoes, Carrot cake will be eight carrots, five purple eggs, and six wheat. Roasted carrots, seven carrots. Let's actually bring this one up because I'm struggling to see it. Ah, there you go. So you get seven carrots, four corn, four onions, and five wheat. Corn cob, nine corn. Street corn. Eight corn, not acorn, eight corn, six onions, and four spices. Corned hash beef, otherwise known as corned beef hash. Seven corn, six slabs of meat, five potatoes, and three spices. Pancake. Pancake is four berries, seven purple eggs, and four wheat. Eggs and bacon. Six purple eggs and four slabs of beef. Full breakfast. Eight purple eggs. Six slabs of beef. Six white mushrooms, which you'll find in the northern areas. Four tomatoes. Fish and chips. Seven blue fish and five potatoes. Fish soup, four carrots, six blue fish, and seven potatoes. Fish balls, we all like balls made of fish. Five purple eggs, six blue fish, and four spices. Fishy sticks, you got, I believe, five corn, and seven red fish. Oven salmon. So seven salmon, of course. Which I'll actually bring that up so you can get a better visual. Actually, there you go. Superior salmon. That is what it was called. Back to that. You're gonna need seven of those bad boys. You're gonna need six potatoes, and you're gonna need five spices. Salmon burger. You're gonna need. Four superior salmon, four lettuce, five onions, and five wheat. Fried vendes. We need five corn, nine redfish, seven fish pasta, six superior salmon, 
three red mushrooms and six wheat. Kala Kuko. Not Kaylee Kuoko. Or whatever the fuck it is. Bazinga. Never watched that show. Anywho, I'm getting on a tangent. Kala Kuko is going to be six superior salmon, six slabs of beef, three spices, and six wheat. Green salad will consist of eight lettuce, six tomatoes. Fresh salad. Six redfish, nine lettuce, and five potatoes. The old steakhouse salad consists of eight lettuce, six slabs of meat, six tomatoes, and two spices. Full length steak. S nope, fooled you. Eight slabs of meat, five potatoes. Hamburger. Consists of five lettuce. No, oh, four lettuce, five slabs of meat, and four wheat. The tenderloin. That will cost you four carrots, five white mushrooms, eight slabs of meat, and four potatoes. The mushroom skewer. Seven brown mushrooms, two onions, and five tomatoes. Hey, mushroom risotto. That's nine brown mushrooms, five red mushrooms, six bowls of rice, and four onions. Bacon mushrooms, four slabs of beef, and seven red mushrooms. For the garlic mushrooms, you will require six red mushrooms, five onions, and four spices. Mushroom omelet consists of two items, six purple eggs, and seven white mushrooms. The old mushroom skillet will hit you up for five slabs of meat, six white mushrooms, and four spices. Mushroom pie is eight white mushrooms, five onions, four spices, and five wheat. Onion rings. Those will put you back seven onions and five wheat. Onion broth, on the other hand, is four purple eggs, three slabs of meat, six onions, and three wheat. French fries, pretty simple. Eight potatoes and five spices. Baked potatoes, on the other hand, would be three eggs, five bluefish, and seven potatoes. Potato salad consists of four purple eggs, seven potatoes, and four onions. Sushi consists of five blue fish, five red fish, no one fish, no two fish. Five blue fish, five red fish, and eight bowls of rice. Beef rice bowl is six carrots, five slabs of meat, four brown mushrooms, and eight bowls of rice. Getting near the home stretch, folks. Hopefully, uh, the soothing side of my voice has made this not as annoying as I'm assuming it was coming across. Chili soup. That is going to hit you for seven tomatoes and six spices. Chili dogs. Six slabs of meat, five spices, and five wheat. Curry, which again is going to give you that nice warm belly cold, cold plants. Five onions, four bowls of rice, eight spices, and seven tomatoes. As for bread, that'll be two corn and seven wheat. Pasta bolognese. That's gonna hit you for seven slabs of meat, six tomatoes, and six wheat. Mm, a spicy burrito. That's gonna hit you for four lettuce, Four slabs of meat, three spices, and five wheat. Kimchi. That'll run you six lettuce, four onions, six carrots, and three spices. And the coveted, last but not least, catfish kamiyaki. This is the one again that's going to give you double materials. That is going to be three legendary fish. 
six wheat, six onions, and four bowls of rice. And with that, I'm tired of talking, so uh, we're gonna close out this video. Hopefully, this will help you along. Hopefully, you've, if you've had questions, this is answered any and all you may have had. And more importantly, hopefully, you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy this game. Uh, with that, we're gonna hit you with the inundated obligatory bullshit potion in the hopes that maybe I've won you over if you're a new viewer. And you'll do us the favor of hitting the like button, subscribe, commenting, and hitting the notification bell. We do appreciate your viewership, and we would definitely appreciate your support here on the channel to help us bring you more articulate and lovely little videos such as this one that you've just seen. We're not like PBS. We are not paid for by viewers like you. But, if we do get enough subscribers, YouTube can pay us, and that'll cover our costs. What are those costs? Our monthly memberships to PlayStation Plus, first and foremost, and maybe a couple of dollars off the electric bill. So, it would mean ever so much if you could spread the word, and help our channel out by subscribing. If you're on the PlayStation, feel free to send us a friend request. We do accept. But if that's not your jam, you can always just follow us at Slam415. And that's enough out of me. This has been an insomniac edition, but I figured I'd get it out of the way. Because I'm pretty much done playing this title, aside from the incidental stuff that I have left over. But I believe this will be the last time we stream this one. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace, y'all.